to this month of May, and May is Bisexual History Month. Um, thanks to the Unicorn March for uh, for starting us off with this, and I'm gonna go back a little bit of a slideshow, uh, telling you about well bisexual history. About 2014, I believe, uh, we put together a uh, an exhibit at the GLBT Historical Society, um, and I'll just go over some of the things we had on that display. Uh, they were pretty cool, and uh, perhaps you'll find something there that you didn't know you uh, really needed to see. Back in 2014, the GLBT Historical Society um, and the History Museum put a uh, proposition in front of me that I could uh, help out with Biconic Flashpoints, Four Decades of Bis Barrier Bisexual Politics. Uh, that was pretty awesome to work on. Uh, we went through everything in their archives and then some, and we pulled out lots of things like uh, these buttons, once Democratic presidential Candidate Walter Mondale selected running uh, made Geraldine Ferraro. Uh, Fairies for her Ferraro sold out quickly. Uh, Lanika Amanu um, did a personal collection. Uh, she had a biphobia shield, and unity is our byword from Bipole. Um, and Fairies for Ferraro from Bipole. It's pretty awesome. Uh, these were pretty cool collections to actually delve into. It included Chance by Lanika Amanu and Bill Mack. They say bisexual is just a stage, but they've been buys in every age. Here we march, sing and rejoice, bisexuality is a real choice. Choosing sides is too intense, bisexual tear down the fence. These are all very exciting if you think about it. Linda Susan Ulrich and Emily Drennan brought their dresses uh, to the party, and that was actually pretty cool. They had a, uh, a stand there with their dresses and pictures of them wearing them in the Prop 8 protests. And the 2003 wedding ceremony in 2004, Winter of Love. We also had uh, bisexual t-shirts like this one here, the 1990 Bisexual Conference, Bisexual Pride shirt from uh, Bipole in San Francisco. Uh, we also had a um, harken back to the Names Project, the quilt. Um, this is from the 1990 Bisexual Conference. We also had some really exciting things like Stop Oppression uh, and the uh, Bicuspid uh, and the uh, time that Lani Kaahumanu uh, ran for VP in the 84 Democratic National Convention, which is awesome. You may notice the Bi Brunch Time Rally. Um, Bi Brunch has been around for a long time, even since before 1984. <laughs> Um, and uh, this is the uh, bisexual newsletter. Uh, try the bi way. Love this. Love spans the spectrum. Uh, bi monthly, it was called. Then uh, we had a dedicated the memories of Cynthia Slater and Dr. David Loria. Um, you know, Cynthia was diagnosed with ARC in 1985, AIDS in 1988. Cynthia organized the women's component of the People with AIDS switchboard and received the Shanti Project Public Advocacy Award for commitment to increasing services available to women with HIV. Cynthia was a grandmother and founder of the Janus Society and fierce bisexual SM leather, leather woman. And David Loria, Dr. David Loria, 1946-1992, after two years of struggle, David, a bisexual activist, AIDS educator, and PWA, uh, persuaded the San Francisco Department of Public Health to recognize bisexual men in their official AIDS statistics in 1984. This acknowledgement set the standard for health departments nationwide, which previously only recognized gay men. In 1981, David and Cynthia Slater lectured about sex-positive, safe-sex behavior um, change model, and it is still being used today. Here's a mock-up showing that uh, the Bi Center was behind uh, one of the benefit proposition N, which is the people of San Francisco call upon the federal government to immediately end all military aid to the government of El Salvador and withdraw the United States military personnel from that country. Uh, this is from the Bi Center. Uh, sponsors are Louis C. Derna, Maggie Rubenstein, Phyllis Lyon, David Loria, uh, Lee Oliver, Margot Ryla, um, uh, Helen Wartman, Stephen B. Kasner, Alan Rockaway, Lani Kahamanu, Bipole, the Bi Center, uh, SFSI, uh, bisexual counseling services. This is all about how our community was working with the larger community in the time. 
having the ability to put this together with the GLBT Historical Society behind us and working with Lonnie and Emily and Linda Susan uh, was really fun to do. It, unveiling it in front of the community was great and it, they kept it up for a lot longer than they said they would. Uh, it was almost there for a year, which was exciting. 